that finishes the main part of the tutorial. For those of you that are interested in going a little bit farther, I'm going to show you a few more tricks about building in Second Life. You'll notice that my lamp has some volumetric lighting effects. Remember, volumetric lighting is uh, the way that you create the illusion that there's maybe some dust or smoke in the air, so you can actually see the beams of light passing through space. I've provided you some extra uh, textures in your kit in order to help you make these effects. Now the way that we're going to do this is of course we're going to use more cones. This is pretty clearly a cone. What we're going to do is we're going to take our lamp. Now remember our lamp is currently linked. That's actually fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of new cones to it. So we'll go ahead and create a new cone. One on the top. And we'll create another cone down here. And what we're going to try to do is move these cones so that they look sort of like realistic light shining out uh, around the lampshade. Let's start with this top one. So I right clicked and selected edit. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do, obviously this cone needs to be moved into position. So just like before, I'm going to click on the red arrow. I'm going to use my guide to help me center it. And I'm going to do the same thing in the green direction, the Y direction. Oh, I guess we've moved our lamp. Let's go ahead and move our lamp back into position as well. Okay, so now we've got the cone, our new cone and our lamp centered at the same point. Now, of course, we want the cone to be facing up. So we'll select the cone and hold the control key in order to get our rotation controls. Now we'll click on the red circle and drag it around so that the cone is pointing down. And if you want, you can use your guide to help you with that. There, now we have a cone pointing up out of the lamp. Now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make this look semi-realistic. Now the light is probably going to shine at an angle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this cone until it looks somewhat realistic to me. Like it might be a believable angle for the light to come out. Of course, most people, most of the time, are not going to notice small errors. So you tend to be able to get away with a fair amount. All right. That looks somewhat reasonable. Now the question is, how do we make this volumetric lighting effect? That's actually what we're going to use this texture called fade out. Because you'll notice that what we want to happen with our volumetric light, we want to be able to see through it. And we want it to be most intense closest to the light and then fade out over time. If you look at this fade out texture, double click it, you'll notice that it starts off solid color at the right hand side and then ends up transparent at the left hand side. So we're going to go and change the texture. And in particular, we're going to drag the fade out texture into the texture box, like that. Now unfortunately, this isn't quite doing what we want it to do. Notice what happened. The texture is actually wrapped the wrong way around this cone. What we really want is the solid part to be down at the bottom and the clear part to be up at the top. In order to fix that, let's look at some of the more advanced texture features. In particular, look down here under rotation. Our problem is that our texture is rotated the wrong direction. It's going around this way. We really want it to be pointed this way. So let's try, just experiment, see if rotating it 90 degrees will get what we want. Great. Looks great. Okay. And the second thing is that I want this light that's coming out of the top to look like the light that I'm actually using. Now, textures and colors in Second Life interact in a, the way they do in other art programs. If you haven't used one, 
The basic idea is that if I select a color, it's going to be mixed with the texture. And the result is now we have sort of fading out yellow. If I click off that, okay. So there we have a nice yellow transparent cone. There is one little problem though, which is that we can see the tip of the cone. It doesn't look very realistic. So what we're going to have to do is change some of the properties of this object so that it really starts right at the top of the lampshade. So just like when we were making the lampshade, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Object tab. Now we're going to modify the taper. So let's go ahead and set this down to, let's try 70%. And then we'll move this up until they mesh. It's not the most realistic thing ever, but we can make more changes to it later. Now the other thing that I don't like about this is that the top of this looks a little bit weird. And there's not going to be a very good way to get rid of that. Typically the place that I would use this lamp is inside of a building where the top of this cone will actually disappear in the ceiling. Okay, There are a couple things that you can try to fix this. One thing that you can do is that you can actually change each face of the, you can change the texture on each separate face of the prim. So let's go back to the texture tab and you'll notice that there are some choices over here that we haven't been using. In order to get our rotate controls, we were hitting control. In order to get our stretch controls, we were hitting control and shift. But there's a fourth option, which is select texture. And what that allows me to do is select a particular face of my prim, in this case the top, and change just that texture. Okay. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and make this transparent. Now, the controls won't let you set 100% transparency. If you need to do that, you'll have to use some scripting. But that looks pretty good. Now, the other thing that I don't like about this is I don't like how solid this looks at the bottom. I really want something that's a little bit more subtle. So I'm going to go ahead and select texture for the main body of the cone. Now the problem that we're seeing is that down here at the bottom this really is a solid color, which is not what we want. We really want it to be fairly transparent at the bottom and then get really transparent up at the top. The way to do that is to stretch the texture out. And in particular, we want to stretch it in the vertical direction. Now, this says repeats per face. So, if we want it to be more stretched, we want less repeats. So, let's set this down to, say, 0 0.5. Oops, I guess I want horizontal. Okay. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the texture down because what I really want is this part of the texture to be closer to the front of the cone. So we're also going to change the offset. Okay, So that's the offset of the texture. Instead of being centered on the cone, it'll be offset by a little bit. So if I decrease this a couple notches, now we have a much more believable volumetric lighting effect. 